how's it going? Thank you so much for joining me today on the meditation channel. So, um, I thought I would do part two of my thoughts on the deep end. Um, I did part one where we basically watched a video um, of Teal, uh, her review, her reply, one of her many replies to basically um, prove that the footage was basically manipulated and that she was manipulated, that her and her team were kind of basically deceived um, by the director, the producer of The Deep End. And so if you want to watch that video, um, I'll do the little thingy here where you can click and watch it. So I thought to be fair, today we would watch a video where basically I would hear John Cosby, Cosby, I don't know his name, and B Bits Sola, which I think is the producer. Um, I wanted to watch their a video with them, basically their thoughts on the deep end. Um, this is actually the the Rewired Soul channel, YouTube channel. Um, and the title is The Cult of Teal Swan into, well, I mean, listen, if you're really gonna start with The Cult of Teal Swan, anyway, interview the Deep End documentary creators, John Casby and Bits Sola. So I thought, I haven't watched this by the way, so I, 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 I have no idea what to expect. Um, I did kind of though skip a little bit at the beginning um, because I, I, you know, obviously I wanted to see if it was like, worthy of watching and it looks like it so far so i'm only at six minutes and 48 seconds in the video the video goes for like an hour so stick with me if you want to if not that's fine um <clears throat> but i just thought it would be fair to see their perspective and see what they had to say and basically comment and um yeah now i want to be straight up forward with you guys i am a fan of teal's work okay i do like her work i do like her teachings i find her to be incredibly profound um, and I have actually been to two of her live events. So what these guys are saying, what they have shown on the deep end is not what I personally saw at these events, um, which is already why I was like, hmm, that's a little bit weird. You guys have to make your own decisions, right? I um, mean, at the end of the day, I'm just saying what I'm seeing. Um, and I haven't met Teal personally, but I have been to her live events and I have been uh, using her, her her teachings for a very long time and I find them incredibly powerful. I think it's really important also guys not to put your all into one teacher, your all into one guru or healer or whatever it is, you know. Just take the bits and pieces that serve you and then the bits and pieces that don't serve you, let them go. Also, you don't have to like somebody to learn something from them. You know, she might be egotistical, she might be all these things, but in the end of the day, to me, what's important is what she's teaching. So, anyway, let's watch this and let's find out. <laughs> okay. um, and and now, you know, the Deep End series we're, we're all here to talk about. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I guess, like, let's dive into the Deep End. Like, I was super interested in it. I think I mentioned it when I first reached out to you too, a long time ago on YouTube, because I was covering like a lot of like mental health topics, because I'm like in addiction recovery, used to work in rehab. And a lot of people were like, hey, have you heard about this lady, Teal Swan? Like, what are your thoughts and everything? And I just never got around to it. So when your, your docu-series popped up on my Google, I'm like, let's check it out. I'm like, what's going on? All right, so, <laughs> so yeah, first, um, I'm just curious. So this is really interesting, okay? So he is saying, I don't know who this guy is, by the way, if you're watching, thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Um, it's interesting because I have personally worked in addiction and recovery as well for a long time as a group facilitator. And, um, you know, I do actually use Teal's teachings in my classes. <laughs> and um, the feedback that I've had from the clients has been actually very good. Uh, once again, I design it in such a way where basically I make it my own and I design it customly, customly. <laughs> I customize the classes for that topic or for that class or for that issue. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Okay. What, what inspired this series? Did one or both of you like come across Teal's work and say, we need to figure out what's going on. Did you hear like conversations going on? How did this whole series come about? Yeah, so this actually started with the production company that I worked with on my first feature. They're called the Documentary Group. 
um, they reached out to me um, and shared with me this podcast that had been made about Teal and some other work on her as well. Um, okay, this is really interesting. So this is not something that he wanted to do. He had a production company reach out to him and say, hey, we want you to do this and we've already worked with this person. And that's what really started off. And I think immediately for me, I was seeing a very clear dichotomy in the way that people were reacting to her. I mm. mean, um, you know, on one hand, you had a bunch of followers who were saying things like, this person saved my life. Um, this person can see all truth. Um, and on the other hand, you had a group of critics who were saying things like, this This person uh, is not trained and um, they're actually quite dangerous and their work is causing people to commit suicide. So right off the bat, I think that that tension between those two perspectives immediately kind of grabbed my attention. But then on top of that, it was really clear from looking at Teal and watching videos of her online, this is a really charismatic, um, fascinating character. And I think as storytellers, those are the type of people that we're always drawn to and trying to understand. So I mean, at the beginning. Storytellers? I thought you were doing a documentary, man. <laughs> I mean, I guess there is a story within the documentary, but I don't see documentaries as storytelling. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, I don't know, you guys let me know. But, you know, for me, a film is a storytelling, you know, I, well, I guess there is storytelling in it, but to me, the minute you say that, it's like there's fantasy attached to it in a way. Documentary is just, to me, it's just showing the facts, showing the truth. To me, documentary is like, let me show you what's really going on here, which I guess that's what they're saying that they were doing, but I don't know. You know, I was just excited to meet her. I was excited to um, to get to know her, to understand how she thinks, how she moves through the world, and and ideally be able to bring audiences into that experience as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious, like as, as you were researching this, you saw like these opposing views and, and everything like that. Um, like she does have a, a lot, a lot of content out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering like, did it seem like beforehand, like there was like more positive than negative. And one of the main reasons I'm asking too is uh, just coming from a mental health background and I read a ton of books from like, from like the self-help gurus, like, you know, where Teal would kind of fall into like just world-renowned psychiatrists and psychologists, people doing research and stuff, right? And I see the blend, like I got sober in 12-step programs, right? Where people are like, that's not science, but it saved my life. So I get it, I get the split opinion. So what? Yeah, this is something that I really did find in recovery that a lot of the times, Many of my clients did not resonate with um, the clinical, uh, you know, very old school way of teaching. You know, um, the 12 steps seems to be very solid, but, you know, you would get therapists and psychologists coming in and, you know, the information would go through one ear and just leave them the other. They're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And it also was really boring to them. So when I would teach them, I would obviously try to make it exciting and real and, and relatable, but um, they found that a lot of the stuff that I, not everyone, by the way, not everybody's gonna like love what you do and some people are gonna hate it, obviously, but some of the people really found it incredibly useful and it really I really was able to pass on some tools that I personally used on myself that changed my life. And they have said that it has made a huge impact on their lives. And by the way, a lot of these, teachings, once again, come from Teal. Um, I make them my own, I, I shift them and I adjust them or I do whatever I do to it, but ultimately the basic, the, the, the root of it comes from Teal's teachings. A lot of them, not all of them. What would you say like the split was like before you two jumped into this of like the, the opposing reactions was like mainly positive or mainly negative. I would say most of the, most of the press I was like, the press I was seeing was like the Gizmodo podcast and the BBC video and Vice put out an article and Vice recently put out another documentary uh, as well about Teal. Mm. Most of all of the press I was seeing was, uh, was negative and it was holding it, it, the angle that all of it was taking was that Teal Swan and her work is causing people to commit suicide. That was about everything that we were seeing at the time. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, that was. Okay. So here's the thing. There's a little bit of a gap with what he's saying here, because he's saying, I was really excited to go and meet Teal, but during my research, all I saw is that people said that she's getting people to commit suicide. That doesn't make any sense, man. Like if, if you're excited to see somebody, I, I don't know. <sighs> 
it's it's it that just doesn't link up to me that was that side and then the positive things we're hearing were really from from people who had spent time with teal who had been to her workshops who would consider themselves followers um and i think that's where that's what really kind of drew us into the beginning is like you know there, there's this group of people who are saying she's really uh wise and intuitive and doing great okay well maybe that's where he got the excitement from he met people i mean he says that he met people but like how many did you meet who are teal followers did you meet them before the the, the documentary or did you just watch them talk about it like i don't know i would have liked to get a little bit more information about that great great work um so why is it that you know the, the media and the press is, is telling this other story mm. Yeah, so what what would, uh, I'd like to get like both of your thoughts, like going into it, right? Based on the research and, you know, usually I'm talking with authors on here. So I'm curious, like, uh, how do you, how do you approach a project like this? Do you try to like just wipe all the outside opinions from you? So it doesn't like skew how you do it. Cause we're going to dive in a little bit later about how she perceived it to be filmed and edited and all that. But what's, what's that like for both of you? Like, did you have like any prior thoughts? Do you try to like erase that? What's that process like? I think we both try to do that. I think it's really important in the work that we do and, and given the, the length of time that we spend in making any of our projects, um, to understand. Yeah, here's the thing. If you really wanted to go in with absolutely no opinion, since you didn't know anything about Till prior, you should have just gone in with no information. Because that way you wouldn't have been influenced. Um, I, once again, documentary is about, like she's saying, it's really important in the, in the job that they do that they're neutral. But you can't help it that after you've heard people say, oh, she, she gets people to commit suicide. And on the other end, they're like, she's a god. There's no way that that's not going to influence your opinion going into it. Understand that it's going to be a journey and you don't know exactly where it's going to go. And you never know. I mean, there's really, you know, similarly, like, COVID happening, like any, you know, the world moves in unpredictable ways and, and people move in unpredictable ways. So certainly, and I'll speak for myself, going going into this project or any project, uh, you, you look around a bit to understand maybe some of the larger questions that are circling um, a person or a scenario. And then I know for myself, and I think we'd be aligned in this, um, that I realize that I don't, I don't know from personal experience what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know what the experience is going to be like, um, in a engaging in a long-term relationship with anyone who we film with. And so I think that relationship you do when you film, I think they film Teal for like two or three years. So that's a long time. You really get to know someone then I talked about this in my other video, but you know, I've worked in film and TV, um, not documentary, but I've been on set for a long time. Like there, there's just no, you're spending hours and hours and hours with the, with the people around you. Of course you're going to become friends. Um, and it's not true that she's say like, you can totally come in with an agenda. You can totally come in with an idea that you want to. And I'm not saying that this is what they did, by the way, I have a whole theory that maybe they didn't even have the end say of, of the footage. Maybe, Hulu decided to go with an agenda. You know, I don't know, because even though these guys made it, doesn't mean that they made the final decision. Um, oh, I forgot my trailer thought. <laughs> yeah, I think my point that I was trying to make is basically like, you can go in with an agenda and you can definitely manipulate footage and make it look a certain way. From what Teal has revealed, because she has actually shown the raw footage, it looked nothing like what they shot. So in the end of the day, I do think that, you know, if you're trying to make something look more exciting than what it is, that's one thing. But when you're changing the, the, the story, that's manipulation. Also, like if you guys watch my, my, my other video, it was two years in that they were friends and these guys were sending her happy birthday videos. Uh, Bits made a whole rap video boasting about how amazing Teal was. So. You know, either way, if they felt that way by within two years, they would have not liked her. And I don't understand why then they were just, they were manipulating her either way. If they were, I don't know how to say this. You see, if you don't like somebody, then why would you praise them? That's the th that's the point that I'm trying to make. So yeah. That takes a wheel and we suddenly in, in this are endeavoring to you know, portray very much our experience there. 
So we're open to what that experience could be. And I think, I think just to piggyback off of what Bits was saying, I think that also allows you the opportunity to add to the conversation, which I think is a really important piece in this, you know, like we wanted to learn enough before going in to know what was being said and then making sure that, you know, we weren't necessarily telling a story that had already been told because of, you know, yeah. wasn't necessary. And we saw an opportunity here to tell a story that we weren't seeing told. Um, and that was a present tense story from within this community. Um, mm. Not only had I not seen that done with Teal's community, I hadn't really seen that you know, done with any community. Most of the most of the films and series I'd seen about groups like this are told in the past tense, where you're seeing people who have gotten out of them and then talking about what it was like when they were in it. And for me and Bits, you know, it was this, it felt like an opportunity where we approached Teal and we kind of told her what we wanted to do and, and how the process works. We let her know, you know, we'll be filming all the time and there's an editing process and we want to understand all the different perspectives around what's going on and. It was interesting, you know, her team or her manager is actually the one who connected us to critics of Teal and, and gave us names of people who were against her and connected us to the private investigator. And that, okay. that was sort of open up. So just so you know, this is very important information. Teal's team themselves connected them to their haters. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but if I had something to hide, I wouldn't do that, you know. So already I think that why would you do that? Why would you want to connect, say, hey, here are the people that are against us. Here's their information. Go and talk to them. Those doors for us. Um, but, you know, again, it goes back to we wanted to add to the conversation and do something we hadn't seen done before. And this felt like an opportunity to kind of bring audiences front and center into the vortex of this inner circle and to see the impact Teal's work was having. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as, as you two are talking to, like, I'm thinking about, like, my own like experience like back in 2019 i had all this stuff come up and like since i was in the mental health space i i know what it's like to have these critics just saying out like we get it you've been in the mental health space <laughs> sorry i don't mean to be mean but it's like i feel like that's the only thing that you're going by maybe or the credit that you're trying to put forward here like it doesn't seem like this guy knows much about teal um he hasn't really said anything, but you know, once again, you know, you're making a video, you're in the moment, you know, who knows, but yeah. And ish things, right? So I try to go into these things like, Hey, I know how articles, you know, might be written and stuff. Like, uh, I think you both like mentioned vice, like vice interviewed me for something a while back. I'm like, Whoa, 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 what are you guys doing? And so I, I appreciate you both going into it like that. Right. And then, you know, watching it, I'm like, uh, it seems like it's kind of hard to make this look a different way than it it's filmed, but no, absolutely not. It is so easy to make something look a certain way. What are you talking? Like, see, already here, this is this is bothering me a little bit because they're like, it sounds like they're setting it up in such a way that they're trying to make us like, hey, we came in with the best intentions, you know. Um... Uh. Bits, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, did you, you worked on the Nexium docuseries as well, right? I did, yeah, The Vow. Got it. Okay, so here's a question that I've been dying to ask somebody, because I watch all of these. I'm mainly, my curiosity comes from, like, how do people get into this? How do people get sucked in and then see this person as, like, this kind of, like, godlike figure, right? Because we see it everywhere. You even see it, like, with Donald Trump's following, right? And that's just really interesting to me. But when it, because uh, Nexium you guys were like in there too, like as things were going on and talking with people who left and all this other stuff. When uh, when you're going in and you're setting this up and you're getting Teal to agree, right? Here's what I'm always wondering. Is there this kind of like, I don't like to use the word, but like ah, narcissistic tech or like giant ego going into this, like I'm an amazing human being. When you film me, everybody's gonna see how amazing I am. Cause sometimes I'm like, why did you all agree? to let people film you this long, you know? <laughs> like, it, it seems like they, they don't they don't see it for what it is. And there's a lot of self-deception, which is another topic that I'm very curious about. So do you, do you get that vibe going into this stuff? I think something that's true of all, and, and again, like every, every project is different. I think we all, and I'm gonna try not sound too lofty when I say this, I think there is a need that, that a lot of people have, I myself have, to feel seen and to feel mm. seen and understood and um <clears throat> so maybe teal does have an ego maybe she does like being in the center stage 
and no seriously what's wrong with that <laughs> like, even if she did like to be in the center of attention even if she i mean what is wrong with that you see we have a lot of shame shame is projected onto people saying oh no you can't talk yourself up you can't be proud of yourself you should not think of yourself as something great and wonderful why but if I sit here and put myself down and belittle myself, then that's accepted. That's a lot more accepted in society. But if somebody's powerful, strong, especially if you're a woman, no, we can't do that, can we? Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> when you get that and when you get presence from someone, and, and, and that could be in a filming capacity, that could just be in a person-to-person -person capacity, uh, I think that can be a really great feeling and or maybe not a great, I mean, it depends how you feel about whatever, you, whatever you're going through. Um and by the way, remember that she wrote an entire poem for Teal boasting about how amazing she is, how wonderful she is, how she's changing the world and transforming people's lives. And then now she's like, well, you know, I don't really want to say anything about it. It's like, say it. Say what you think. Don't tippy toe around it. Say what you think. Because you see now you have this footage that is showing that you said something one way and now you're doing something. I mean, ugh. And I think one of the hardest things. Sorry, it's one of my pet peeves with people is that when I love people who are very upfront, very honest, which is not common, unfortunately, anymore. And I just, you know, if you don't like someone, it's okay. You don't have to like them. You can just say, look, I didn't like her, you know? What's wrong with that? It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's just me. Things in, in what we do is that, um, that reflection can sometimes, there are going to be parts of that reflection that do feel familiar and resonant to you and parts that maybe don't. Um, and that's all in the eye of the beholder, but in terms of going in and saying like, do I think in this position, there was a narcissistic quality. I, I don't think I'm like qualified to make it. Oh, okay. So you're qualified to make a whole documentary about her and to write a rap song about her, but you're not qualified to give your opinion. You see, this is typical behavior in my opinion, by the way, guys, you can have your own and that's totally fine. When you're doing this, you're trying to protect your, your own image here. See, not having an opinion then keeps you kind of like, invisible but when you have an opinion you stand out and you have to own that opinion that determination but i think for anyone and john and i have had this experience too of we to understand what it's like to be in a in a project like this we've you know turned the cameras on ourselves and mm -hmm. gone through that process ourselves and there's something i think there's there's certainly some catharsis and feeling of understanding and doing that and uh, I mean, the other two, the thing I'll say is like to bring it to Teal a little bit more. I remember at the very beginning of this process when we went and and kind of just had the conversation about what filmmaking is and mm -hmm. let her know that we'll be filming all the time and how it's going to be edited. And, and we we're very you know, transparent about all of that up front. Um, one thing Teal said is she, yeah, one sorry, Teal said, one thing Teal said is she was like, I'm, I really appreciate your honesty and that you're just being open about all of this. Like, this is something new for us. We haven't had someone come to us and kind of tell us what the process is like. And she said to me, you know, I'm never going to tell you to turn your camera off. Like I Once again, if you have nothing to hide, I mean, obviously Teal didn't go in this thinking that, you know, she from the beginning, they're saying this, by the way, she from the beginning was like, I'm not going to tell you to turn the camera off. Thank you so much for letting me. Like, she doesn't sound like an a-hole to me right now. She sounds like a very open person who... Anyway. I, she's like, I actually feel safer when the camera's pointed at me. And it's because I've been through so much abuse in my past that when the camera's pointed at me, I know whatever happens is going to be documented. And that mm -hmm. provides safety. And so for me and for us as storytellers, we're like, wow, well, this is so interesting. Like, this is someone who, um, you know, is totally comfortable being filmed. And over time, you know, after the first year of filming, I think we started to realize that Teal really believes in herself and what she's doing and what she stands for. And there's this, almost this kind of like an unapologetic energy to her method mm -hmm. and to her ambition. And she felt like she had nothing to hide. And I don't think she sees herself as problematic and she does yeah. have a deep... Listen, that I can agree with, okay? Um, she may not, you know, and yeah, I mean, he's making a good point there. She may not see herself the way that she thinks she, you know, she may not see herself. <laughs>
deep, deep desire to be seen. Um, so I think it's kind of the combination of all those things is what led to this, this documentary taking off. Yeah. I gotta say though, if Teal really wanted to be seen, like if that was her real agenda, I don't think that she would be in the healing industry. <laughs> I think she could be an actor or a TV presenter or I don't know, there's a million other ways to be seen. But then again, you know, if you think about the healing guru kind of thing, you kind of worshipped and seen as a god, so maybe, I don't know. I will say, if I may, I know it's the longest answer in history, um, that we we always are, are also transparent along the way and mm -hmm. to anyone we're filming, you know, you can tell us at any time to put the cameras down. If you turn to us directly and ask us to do that, we will always do so. And to John's point, I think about Teal certainly standing behind what she's doing and what she's saying consistently. I don't, uh, I, I could probably count on one hand the number of times I think that we were, we were asked to stop and obviously would have done so if we were asked. We were we were we were asked to stop quite a bit at uh, the retreats. So when mm. people would come to her to learn uh, right. in the completion process, or come to her to heal, that all the time people would say, "Please stop filming." And for us, it, it's a no questions asked policy. We put the cameras down immediately. Um, I mean, with teal, with yeah. teal, teal, I don't think ever said it. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, you know, people are being vulnerable. People are going through something really intense, and of course, they don't want their shit displayed on camera. Um, but they said teal never stopped. Teal never asked to stop filming her. So, I can't think of a single time Teal asked us to stop. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's really that's really interesting. I guess, and I guess we'll dive into the meat of this. And you know, uh, for the audience too, like the main reason I I wanted to reach out to you both is you two are the very first like non-author, non-like just people in that sphere. Like you're the first documentarians on this podcast. But what like I love the series, but what just blew my mind even more was. Uh, as, after, as I was watching, I was like, I wonder if Teal's like talking about this. And I went to her YouTube channel and uh, I think it was after the first two episodes and she had recaps of both. But anyways, that's when I was like, I need to reach out to these people. Like I need to reach out because I feel like, like just react. Yeah, but did you reach out to Teal? <laughs> I mean, if you want to be really fair, you know, I don't know is just skewed in some way. I was so confused. So that's why I reached out to you too. So uh, I highly recommend people go check those videos out and compare it because I was like, Good. wait a second. Good. I like that. That's fair. Wait, wait, wait a second. Because she perceived <clears throat> you, you and the editing team as creating a certain narrative, cutting and all these other things. And you know, like I've been on YouTube for a while. I know how editing goes. I know like, you know, and obviously you have to create a story, but I guess I want to start out with, have you both watched all of her recap videos of it? And what was your reaction as you watched, <laughs> as you watched these? Like, I don't know, like for me, I was like, I think I'm taking crazy pills. I don't know what's happening. So can you kind of- surprise. We were also, we also felt like we were on those same pills. We were taking <laughs> yeah. the same ones. I mean, I, I remember, I remember I, I, from the very first one, the very first reaction to episode one, she was against the show and 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 criticizing it and, and calling all these things out that I didn't even understand. Like there were contradictions within her responses that didn't totally make sense to me. But for us, you know, we've watched all four of them and we sort of stepped back and as we've reflected on this, it's like given what we said to her and the expectations we set at the beginning of this and the number of conversations we had and how unambiguous we were with, with her and her manager about our scope of work, I don't know what she expected beyond that. You know, we, we told them what we were going to do and we did exactly that. We said, we're going to spend a lot of time here. We're going to take a close look at your community. We're going to film and edit what we see happen and what we feel like is important. And I think at the end of that process, there are really three kind of pillars that rose to the surface that you see in the show. I mean, the first one is the internal conflict with our group, which you see play out. The second one is um, this idea that you're seeing people come in from the outside looking for help and having mixed results. Um, mm -hmm. And then the third one was that they hire a private investigator to determine if they're a cult or not. And you see the results of that play out. And that, you know, those are the things we witnessed while. I mean, that's true, you know, they did. But once again, I don't know who hired the investigator. Maybe it could have been Teal's team. Um, you know, I mean, sure, that could be fair. Um, there was definitely some inner conflict within her team uh, from what they showed. Um, but you know, it's also a business. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and then, you know, the results, I mean, as far as results, when it comes to healing, 
There's only so much that I think a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, a healer, a guru, whatever you want to call it, can do to help somebody. In the end of the day, the healing really happens when the person really wants to change and really does do the work. End of story. So whether you are the best healer in the world, if that person's not willing to heal, they're not going to get the results. Other there and... I think for me and for us as storytellers, when you when you agree to give access to filmmakers, you're agreeing to subject to subject yourself to a process. Um, so on one hand, we're really surprised by it. On the other hand, like I I do, me and Bits talk about this, I don't know how surprised we can be by this because her response to the whole series is very aligned with how we've seen her treat other people who have left the group or who disagree with her teachings. Um, this 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 process of kind of crafting an alternative narrative to just credit people who. Um, push against her like we've seen it happen okay I'm gonna try and be fair here fair enough that could be a point you know that is definitely a cult thing where you know maybe she's taking her own narrative and and making these guys look like the bad guys but having said that she did show the real footage in her videos where they showed what they portrayed and then she showed the whole footage raw unedited it's totally different things. So at the end of the day, regardless of what these guys are saying, I'm sorry, but from what I've seen personally, the footage was definitely taken to a level that was unnecessary and it portrayed a, it definitely came across, you know, portrayed a certain teal in a certain way. Now, she can be an amazing healer, okay, and still be an asshole. Okay, like that can happen. I don't know. I like her. I like strong personalities, but that's me personally. I haven't been treated by her. I've never had a one-on-one -on -one session with her. I have no idea. Abuse, though, is a very different story. We're seeing it happen right now, and and if you if you dig, you know, if you search on the internet, there's other people like and even are you know are going through that. But I don't know. I I, I think for me. I've similar to you, I've been encouraging people to watch them because I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say like, you know, I watched your series and it was incredible and it really made me think about healing and it made me think about mental health and it made me think about these things and I was really conflicted about a lot of it and then I saw her, I saw her reaction videos and it took away all ambiguity. It's very clear now <laughs> um, who this is and, and what this is. So I've been encouraging people to watch them. I think they're really telling. Yeah. What, what was your reaction like when you saw it? And, and I guess, by the way, like, did you guys have like a watch party? Did you get the whole crew together and say like, hey, let's see what Teal's saying. Or were you all watching individually and like texting each other? Like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> like, how is that? We didn't. I just been on. It's just been a process, I think, following release to try to understand. We, we, we honestly, we were surprised by each reaction. I think there were things in there that we were confused by certainly um i mean john and you did but i didn't think it no i mean I, I think it's been a celebratory it's, it's it's not a celebratory thing and we've also never experienced anything like this like we've yeah. never made a documentary and had the people in it uh respond the way in which she is so on that on that sense it's very uh concerning and shocking and surprising on the other hand i think it's it's dangerous in a way because what this has led to is a lot of all of her followers um no well no i mean uh, I, a lot of the people that listen to her and take what she says at face value, um, going after the people in this series. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I hadn't even thought about that. Uh, as I mentioned in 2019, you see this, especially with YouTube. I've noticed it more. Yeah, that's just like, you know, <sighs> people definitely get aggressive. I mean, I even get like sometimes comments on my channel. I've, I've made some opinions of people trying to call me through like Instagram and stuff and like, you know, people can take it a little bit too far. Um, and I'm assuming if you're like a diehard Teal Swan fan and you saw this, you know, people just get angry and they just lash out and it gets to a point where it's just so toxic and just so harmful um, and it's unnecessary. Just let it be, keep your opinion, express your opinion, but just don't go after people, you know? YouTube then probably anywhere else is these parasocial relationships, right? Like people defending whoever it is, like a lot of them, like a lot of these other YouTubers aren't even in this like kind of self-help you saved my life realm. It's like, you know, a Logan Paul and those kids will come after you and say like, you're a piece of shit or, you know, PewDiePie or whatever. And I hadn't even thought about that, but, um, you know, just, just to speak to my personal experience, like getting sober through 12 step programs, you get a sponsor, right? And you're told to like, look for somebody 
who has what you want, right? Like you find someone like I'm brand new sober, this guy's five years sober. And it's like, do I want to be where this person is in five years? Okay. That's how I was always taught, you know? And I started seeing people who had years of sobriety and they were still acting wild, right? I remember meeting people like, yeah, I've been sober for seven years, but I got arrested for like domestic <laughs> violence. I'm like, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. You know? <laughs> um, but anyways, what I'm getting at is, you know, cause I'm in no position to diagnose or anything like that. But as I'm watching this, I'm like, it personally feels like Teal has stuff to work on but she's guiding so many other people. And I think another example of that, that uh, I'm not sure how closely you follow this guy, but Jordan Peterson, <clears throat> right? There's been so much news about him lately. And as a recovering addict who has worked with thousands of addicts, I'm like, this guy was gone for over a year because of a, a Xanax addiction. He comes back, releases his second self-help book, and all of his followers just seem to completely disregard it. And nobody asks, is this person yeah i had somebody say this to me once that basically you'll end up in the job or teaching something that you need the most help with and i think that's kind of true um yeah i'm a bit conflicted about that because in one sense yeah he's right but in another sense it also makes sense as to why these people are teaching you know um who should be guiding me and teaching me how to get to a a better place but definitely do you want to be living that person's life you know i think i would never get advice from somebody like i wouldn't I want, i'm not going to go and get financial advice from somebody who's broke you know i'm going to go and get financial advice from from somebody who's financially successful um so you know please so when, <clears throat> when you were talking with uh the people who attend her groups and things like that did you see any kind of common threads? Like something I'm always wondering, are, are a lot of these people, like specifically with Teal, like are a lot of these people, people who try traditional mental health treatment, like therapy, uh, medications and stuff, they didn't work or they had a bad experience. And that's what led them here. Because I've noticed that a lot with like, uh, you know, these kind of like pseudoscientific medicines and treatments and stuff. And I'm curious if that's the same, what was that like? We, d we did meet a lot of people who had had those experiences that they relate to us, that they had tried traditional mental health avenues or had been unable to continue to afford. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think it really speaks to part of what interested us certainly was like the backdrop, I think, of this mental health crisis mm -hmm. in this country, but also all around the world, which is, you know, if you feel failed by a traditional provider, uh, or if you, or if you're unable to continue that treatment and if. I mean, once again, you know, I think for some people therapy is great and for other people's therapy doesn't work. You know, um, I'm a big advocate of both, you know, do therapy and maybe do some spiritual healing, you know, and get some spiritual advice. Uh, but I think for me personally, it's just get as many different get you know go from many different sources eventually something's going to click and eventually something's going to work for you um and also like you hear stories about therapists i mean i've treated therapists in rehab who some of them were amazing but some of them were had no self-worth didn't know what they were doing they were just doing it because that's what they were told to do when they were young they have no passion behind it and you know it was very interesting to see because, you know, they're just people, you know, they, they, they themselves don't always have the answers. They're just going by a book. And these books also, you got to remember, are always evolving. We're discovering new things about the human mind, about human behavior. So it's important just to keep an open mind sometimes. It feels like there's another option and there are answers available there. Um, you know, I think a lot of that's a, that's a really... Uh, alluring <clears throat> proposition. Yeah. Yeah. And ha has it shifted uh, how, how you both like see what's going on in the, like with the mental health crisis, like what's going on? Like for me, when I watch it, because I'm, I'm always wondering, especially when people join these groups or whatever it is, I'm like, what, what happened and who, who mistreated you or, you know, what, you know, uh, like uh, working in treatment, I know I've noticed a lot of people have childhood trauma. 
So there's a lot like, I'm like, hey, parents, get your shit together because we're messing up our kids, right? But anyways, like, has it made you think about like, hey, what are therapists and psychiatrists doing that, that push somebody into the arms like a teal? How are you both? Okay, relax, buddy. That pushed you into the arms. <laughs> I think that's a little, you know, come on. I just think sometimes people just don't resonate with that it's just not working and then looking for something else other times maybe it could be that extreme but like in the mental health <laughs> scenario in the world today i i mean yes the answer is yes it definitely <laughs> challenged our our preconceived notions around that in a way that i think we both really appreciated um and i think it's it's also what's so complicated about teal is that there are things that are troubling but there's also a lot of things that she's saying that make a lot of sense and i think that's what makes mm. it such a such a murky situation, but in terms of the mental health um, question, yeah, I mean, I, one of the things that Teal says that has always stuck with me is she says, you know, it's not what's wrong with you, it's what happened to you. And yeah. we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at healing through that perspective. And personally, I found that really um, encouraging and safe to, to, you know, to think about it that way. And I, and I think a lot of the people coming to Teal, as, as Bits was saying, are really vulnerable, have felt like mental health uh, systems and therapy and all that have, have really failed them. And I think for Bits and I, and a lot of people on our team, like there was a very personal element to this where we have friends or we have family members who have felt failed um, by their therapist, who have fa helped fail by traditional medicine that is supposed to help you with depression, that's supposed to help you with anxiety. Um, and I think we were finding it more and more, um, it, it just it started making more and more sense why people would turn to someone like Teal, why someone yeah. would turn to someone on Instagram or on YouTube, putting out a message that clicks and makes sense and is digestible. Um, and, and, you know, the thing that I think I wrestled with a lot is like, I've done a lot of therapy over the last five years. And, um, one thing I really love about it is that the therapist I've, I have been working with, he oftentimes leads me um, down a path, but really lets me take ownership of yeah. the conclusion. And so when I have, when I, when I have a breakthrough, it's mine. Um, mm -hmm. and I think what Teal's doing is very different. I think what she's doing is she's giving people answers and she's able to do that because of these supernatural. That is not what I've seen at her events. She definitely guides people. She definitely um, nudges them sometimes when they're stuck and when they don't have an answer, but that's not what I've seen. I've seen her definitely allow people patiently, by the way, very patiently allowed people to come to their own conclusions. So. abilities that she says that she has around being able to see people's truth around being able to predict the future but about being able to have universal perspective on all things so yeah. when someone goes up on stage with her uh, most of the time what i saw were people accepting whatever she said at face value and taking it on as their own and believing it fully and i think that's where it gets a little bit tricky because um you know we um I mean, I haven't seen anyone question Teal on stage because it may be just the events that I've been at and it hadn't happened. But I have seen people challenge her and definitely like even my friend who I went with to the event, like he, he didn't resonate with her as much as I did. He didn't find her stuff to be in alignment with what he wanted, um, but he still got some good stuff out of it. Um, so I think if he goes in thinking that people don't question her or challenge her, I mean, even in the documentary, people have challenged her and have questioned her to her face. So we saw some examples where someone would spend an hour with her on stage and afterwards they'd be like, that totally changed my life. That was 10 years of therapy compressed to one hour. I'm yeah. so thankful. And we were like, that's amazing. Like we're excited for you on your way. And there were other times where we saw people go up there and have an experience that that seemed to unsettle them, that didn't seem true to them. And they're really trying to make sense yeah. of what was told to them um but but couldn't so i think for us the takeaway in all of this and how we kind of contextualize it within the mental health field is that you know anytime you're in a position where you have someone else determining what is right or wrong for you you're putting yourself at risk and i think yeah. that's that's kind of our takeaway from this whole thing and we yeah 100 percent. like i agree with that you don't want to give your power to somebody but personally i haven't seen teal do that necessarily she's very strong in her opinions and she's very uh, she has a very powerful presence. She definitely knows what she sees, what she thinks. But I haven't personally seen her necessarily say, oh, this is the reason why you're going through this and this is what you need to do. Um, she might say, do you see how this is happening because of this? Which I guess you could 
see it that way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Experience that ourselves personally. We saw a lot of people go through that and that risk isn't always realized. And it's not necessarily just in communities like this. I think it can be happening in, in the workplace when you're, you know, in an extreme job. It can happen in religion. It could happen in your family. Yeah. Um, so that idea of, you know, staying skeptical, questioning the people around you, trusting your gut and, and holding on to your agency, I think is really important. And I hope that this show uh, encourages more people to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you have something you were going to add to that, Bits? No, well, I was just going to, you know, say that if there's no one size fits all, which we all know for everything. And I actually, I've never had, I've read books with that have opposing perspectives on mental health topics and i don't see anything wrong with taking the parts that are useful from both of them and mm -hmm. not subscribing entirely to each of them and i yeah i would just second second john's notion that that is it's it's about retain, maintaining some element of trust within yourself yeah um, as you move through those processes so that you can know at the end of it that you're building yourself you know with help yeah. Um, responsible for that journey. Yeah, it's it's something that I think about quite a bit. Right, like there's that there's that saying or like parable, like you know when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Right, like I I was in my drug addiction for nearly a decade. I just celebrated ten years, but I'm only here because I was finally ready. Right, like I tried twelve step programs before. I went to treatment before. None of it worked. And ten years ago, in 2012, when I went back to twelve step programs. It all just clicked. They weren't saying anything new. Those fools have been saying that same thing for a hundred years. It's exactly what I said before. You can be the best healer in the world, but if the student is not ready and they don't want to change, they're not going to change. But it finally clicked. And what worries me, and I think that's kind of what you're, you're touching on, and maybe you have the same concern, is that uh, when someone's ready, but the person they interact with is somebody like this, right? Like I'm finally ready to hear what needs to be heard, but it might be a bad situation. And it's not just Teal either. I've seen this with bad therapists, but with what you're talking about, John, with therapy, like you just nailed it. Like you're talking about, I'm like, John's got a badass therapist, right? Because like, that's what they're supposed to do. My girlfriend, she actually just finished her, her master's program, right? In social work. And we're watching this thing and my girlfriend's losing her shit. She's like, what is this? <laughs> because like you're saying, she's like, you're giving answers and not like guiding the person to kind of figure it out. And I think uh, that builds this kind of reliance on the person because if they're just feeding you answers, now you haven't, you know, grown the strength to walk on your own. You need to keep turning back to these people. I don't know. You guys let me know. Do you think that Teal gives the answers or do, do you feel that she guides people? Cause I mean, for me personally, also, I like it when somebody gives me the answer. Like I can make my own decision based on what they told me, whether I want to take it or not. But yeah, I get it. If somebody's really fragile and vulnerable and they can't make their own decision, then of course they're just going to take it as truth. But you guys let me know what you think on that. Well, but um, I do want, I want to circle back to the whole like perception Teal had while watching it. Cause you touched on the private investigator. Okay. And here's the part that really messed me up. I think this is actually when I'm like, okay, I need to reach out to these people. So those who, uh, those who haven't watched it, I'm going to spoil it a little bit, right? Teal and her team hired a private investigator. They brought in somebody from the outside and they said, hey, people are saying we're a cult. People are saying we lead people to suicide. We're going to take our money. We're going to hire you. Come investigate us and find out, right? The only reason I know that information is because I watched your damn documentary. I saw all of this explained. So I am a viewer, right? Then I turn on YouTube, I go to Teal's YouTube channel. And I think in more than one video, she's telling the audience, she's like, oh, by the way, we're the ones who hired her. She's not independent. And I'm like, why would anybody think otherwise? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I'm like, is she seeing what what is real or, you know, whatever. So can you kind of explain, like, I don't know, I guess your reaction to that and as well as, cause you- I don't know, I don't see anything wrong with that. She's just making the points like, hey, by the way, we hired her, these guys didn't hire her. So if something bad comes out, just so you know, it's on us. Uh, it looks like you interviewed the investigator on her own too. Like, was there anything that you learned from her and her research or about how they assess cults and all that kind of stuff? I mean, I, I, that react, that reaction from Teal is one that I cannot explain. I don't know why. And there was, 
a lot of them like that. Like there were other ones where she was talking, like, I think it was the scene in the hot tub where she was saying, I, I was angry or something because there was someone new coming in and I needed to like defend my thing. And the scene made it seem like I was something else or jealous or something. And I was like, no, th that's what the scene was about. Like you're actually describing exactly what, what we saw and what I think the scene says and what everyone is telling us they're seeing from the scene. So I, I really, uh, had a hard time understanding her perspective when uh, analyzing the show. Um, and the, well, yeah, I, I thought the show made it really clear what we saw, which was that Teal hired this person. Um, it's also interesting, you know, it's really, really clear. As Sorry about that. My camera <laughs> battery died. As Matias is hiring her, that he's hiring her to figure out if they're a cult or not, and if they're responsible for the suicides or not. Like, that's like, couldn't be more clear. And Teal's now uh, has a different story that she was hired to work on public image or something different that we never saw of, that never heard, knew that that was what she was being hired. So there's a lot of, I think, confusion, misinformation um, coming out right now uh, with these videos. Um, and in terms of the process, um, you know, it was super interesting. Like, this was our first time following a PI. And, you know, mm -hmm. when we started this project, we had no idea. Like, Matias connected us with, like, that's how that came about. Like, we'd never even thought that that was going to be a mm -hmm. thing or that they would hire someone to, to do that. Um, but, but again, you know, it kind of goes back to the, the energy of the beginning of this whole process where Teal and Matias, the manager, were both saying things like, you know, we have nothing to hide and we want to know the truth. And the authenticity is the most important thing to us. And that's kind of what he was presenting to me when he... You can think of this in two ways. One, that Teal genuinely is delusional, but also apparently her team is and her manager, or she genuinely had nothing to hide. He hired her and sent her on this journey. I mean, it was interesting. You know, I think his journey and what she was doing really opened up um, the conversation to be able to hear more voices and more perspectives about Teal, which I think was really valuable because, you know, it's it, it felt very insular when we were there. And a lot of the voices we were hearing were mostly Teal and her inner circle yeah. when we were in that community. And so being able to, to spend time with and to open up and to hear from people who used to be in the inner circle and had left mm -hmm. and were able to speak on things that we were feeling and experiencing but couldn't quite put words to yet, mm -hmm. um, I found personally really valuable. And I hope that the audience does as well because there's something very grounding about it. Um, yeah. And in, you know, Teal's world can be so floaty and it can be so hard to pin things down and to get straight answers and just had no room for that. She had no room for that. She was like, yes or no, like, you know, which I, I appreciate and I hope the audience does too. I think it's important. Yeah. You know, I, I, the other thing that I, I love reading about is just kind of like groupthink and conformity because with, with Molly's investigate, uh, investigation, what's, what's interesting is like you said, like Teal's uh, manager, like, right, he was involved in it too. So it's not just Teal, right? You see this entire group reinforcing it. And it's like an entire group creates this different reality. And it's funny, my son's 13 and I've been reading books with him. I, I, I've been reading, uh, this book, uh, you are not so smart by David McCraney, which teaches you a lot about like biases and heuristics and just thinking errors. Right. And one of them I taught my son about is conformity. I'm like, Hey, like there's the ash, the famous ash conformity experiment. Sometimes it just takes one person to say, Hey, what you're all seeing is not what's going on, <laughs> you know? But as I'm watching them, like everybody's reinforcing this. Right. And, and then you're wondering, is it like, are they really seeing this? Are they worried about losing their job, losing where they live or losing friends? Right. Because I grew up in Las Vegas. Uh, I've been watching some of those recent, like, uh, uh, Mormon docu-series and stuff. I don't know if you saw that new one. <laughs> but uh, I, I grew up with a lot of Mormons here, and they're not, you know, in the fundamentalist group. But there's still that, uh, if I leave this, I lose all my friends. I lose all my support. I mean, that's that's a fair point, and that does happen. I mean, once you're so involved in something and you get close to somebody, um, I mean, you know, uh, people can make you feel amazing, make you feel seen important. And, you know, you rather put up with some bullshit than not be part of it and, and be alone and not being able to have friends or a community or whatever it is. So that's, that's totally a fair point. Well, you know, so in that sense, it helps me empathize with people who join like QAnon or MAGA or whatever it is, but talking about that inner circle in this group, this tight knit group, Please, for the love of God, explain this to me. Because another thing Teal kept saying is, you guys kept making it seem like they all live under the same roof, right? But they don't. Everybody lives in different areas and stuff. I'm watching it. I'm like, 
Seems like a lot of people live together, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if people just come and live for a little bit. But one thing that really stood out to me was when finally leaves, I see him packing a room. <laughs> so I'm like, if you don't live there, why are you packing a room? So can you explain what the living situation is like? Because I'm very confused. Absolutely. Yeah. So over the course of three years, we filmed moving in and out of that house multiple times. Mm. Um, and he had a room at Teal's house throughout um, most of the time we were there. And once he arrived, he wanted more space. So he moved two minutes from Teal's house to live with her ex-husband. So he was two minutes away, but he kept his, his room at Teal's and he would be over there pretty much every day. Um, and they'd crash there. And this was similar for other people in the inner circle. There are people who lived in the house and there are other people who lived very close by. Um, and I'll then, just, I'll amend also and just say that like we, we were there for sometimes large chunks of time, sometimes a few days, mm. sometimes a few weeks. And this all took place over the course of three years. It was, I think the number of days is close to five months total or six months total, something like that. So, um, there were also times when we went there and I don't know who was living where when we went there, but from what we saw, so I just want to like clarify that, that like, they may yeah, but living or like staying? I mean, if they're talking about Blake, by the way, which is Teal's best fr was Teal's best friend before he got the girlfriend. I don't know what happened there, but there was some, something happened. You know, he's always been very close to Teal, um, so that's to me is not weird at all. But yeah, I mean, I guess the other people. But even so, like what? Maybe they stayed there for like a week because they had to film something or they had some work to do. I, I mean, we don't know. Or maybe they lived there. Have also been movements and we went there. like I don't know but uh, uh, yeah yeah so obviously that but, but the point that I'm trying to make here is they obviously made it very very clear that they didn't live there 24 7 it wasn't a community and in the documentary it made it look like you know these people live there 24 7. And then after that big you know you intervention scene that kind of like the last straw for both of them and that was when um packed up and he left and he moved to Salt Lake City with you yeah Wait, like 35 minutes away or so yeah, like that, that's kind of what I assume. I'm like, if they don't like all live together, they live pretty close. But real quick, what about the other like uh, inner circle people? They live there like uh, Teal's, uh, I believe it was her assistant or something. It seems like they, she was there quite a bit, you know, but there, there becomes a situation. I mean, it's their job. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if, if I had an assistant, she'd probably be here like seven, six, five hours a day, maybe eight. Maybe 10, depending on what you have to do. Which I'll, I'll you know, say this about, you know, uh, one, of my, one of my girlfriends, right? Like, she was there every day, right? She spent the night, like, 90% of the time. Then we moved in together. I'm like, oh, this is pretty much the exact same thing, <laughs> you know? So it seems like we're less, like, uh, like splitting hairs at that point. So what about the, the rest of the group yeah, at I, their own places? A few of the individuals do live there and have rooms there. Um, and other folks live in very close proximity. Mm. But yes, she shares that home also with members of the inner circle. But the feeling is kind of what you're describing with your with your girlfriend, where it's like everyone's over there ninety percent of the time. Um, and that's why, you know, it's for us in the editing process, it didn't seem it didn't feel and I still don't think it was something that we needed to clarify in terms of how we edited the show because of Yeah. You know, you know, I don't feel like they tried to make it look that way, to be quite honest. Um, but it did look that way. So maybe because there's the cult association to it now that, you know, it's like, oh, they live there and everybody's like, you know, around each other 24 seven. I don't know. But yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is that everyone's over there constantly. Yeah, that 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 was another that was another weird aspect, right? Like, okay, but guys, you do know that that's a business, right? Yes, she is a healer. Yes, she is an alchemist. Whatever you want to call her, okay. But it's a business that she's running. So those people that are over there are part of the business. They probably get paid to be there. <laughs> They're not doing it for free. Maybe they are, but I'm assuming that you know they need to pay rent and like. I feel like this is a topic that you really have to ask those guys about, you know, and just like, hey, what was your living situation? Did you live with Teal? Why? Why are you there all the time? I think we're also like, this is a lot of hearsay and we don't know for a fact. If anything, like the director and the producer should know better and it doesn't seem like they really do know either because obviously they didn't ask enough questions. Part of me when I saw Teal kind of defending, oh, people don't live here. People, I'm just like, 
I don't really care. Like that, that's not like affecting a major part of this story. Like it's just it's not the issue. Yeah, there's yeah. so many things yeah. going on here. I'm like, I could care less who. Well, it makes sense because she doesn't want you guys to think of it as a cult because that's what cults do. Physically lives there, but it was just one of those weird things. I mentioned it in an email to you all. Um, and this kind of leads into my next question, because one of the accusations she had is a lot of editing. She said that it was filmed over three years, which you both just said too. And she was like, they would film something from one day and slice it with another day to build a story and make me look bad. And I think it was episode four, I think it was the uh, intervention one where she was talking about different days and I literally pause her video. I told my girlfriend, I'm like, hold on, I got to check something. I go back to Hulu, I go to the episode, and I go and I see what Teal's wearing, see what everybody's wearing, right? Then I fast forward to the part she said was spliced in. I'm like, she's wearing the same damn thing. Like, does she, is that just a And I can thing? tell you, I will promise you, Teal Swan is not an outfit repeater. <laughs> so, so what can you, can you like, uh, you, you both seem pretty honest. That's not true. I've seen her wear the same outfit for different things. But hey, that's that's a good point. Okay, so he's just trying to disprove that the editing wasn't manipulated. So that's one way to find out, I guess. As to me, like, can you explain, like, over that three years, how much was like chunked together? You know what I mean? Is that is that anything? And because if I did notice it, if I did notice like a voiceover, again, it was one of those like, who lives there? I'm like, I don't really care. This didn't really affect anything so what was the editing like how much was taken put together and you know from from your perspective as like a story teller as well yeah you know? yeah yeah i mean you know the scene that you're talking about the intervention scene the scene where he's in the kitchen and teal is really upset with him um scenes like that where it's really clear that this is all happening in one place and at one time that's what's happening there um mm -hmm. that that there's not things taken from other days to build i i remember teal had some she was saying something about like a hospital and uh, footage from a hospital being used in the kitchen scene, which I have no, I have no clue what she's talking about. Um, if I may, like, also just so you know, some like some of those, you know, more group discussions. Sometimes those could go on for several days, and we would, you know, so what? it there would be long processes of talking through one one obstacle or interpersonal conflict. Which would which could be um, five, six, seven, eight hours one day, and 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 the following day. Wait, I, I mean, like, uh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so they are saying that some of the footage has been taken at different times, different days, because the same thing was talked about for several days. So yes, so they're basically saying yes. Sometimes the footage was taken one day, the next day, and the day after that, which is not great for editing for for documentary sake. But then John is saying that, you know, things like in the kitchen scene, that was just one day. So it could be a bit of both, could be a little bit of all. <clears throat> that one's a good example. Like that uh, scene where they're going around and doing that, that's one day. That happened one day, but that, that event took place over three days. Yeah. And this was something in the edit that was a real conversation because like there were things on other days where editors were like, I think this is what the scene should be about. And we had to pick which day was going to be the one, you know, yeah. so everything you're seeing in that scene is what happened on that day in that moment. And as you said, when you okay. So he's saying, no, everything that you see on that scene is that day. Well, as bits is saying, well, no, actually there were some times that we took different days. So which one is it guys? <laughs> Go back and look at it. It's really clear. There's no ambiguity around it, but I think that, I think the places where there, there are, um, editing is doing, being done more is when you look at like the beginning of episode four, where you're seeing a montage of a lot of different visuals from different places to have yeah. that set a tone like that those are places where we're taking editorial liberties and actually making something a little bit more artistic and poetic to create a feeling but in these like uh pillar moments of the show where he's deciding if he's going to stay or not and the, the community is turning on you like, and as you're seeing emotional processes play out we're not manipulating that material what you're seeing is is what happened yeah I will also say that I think something that we gut check on in the edit ourselves is does this, we can't comment, we're not like arbiters of what ultimate truth is, right? I, I don't, I'm don't. i just a person who is going through an experience and trying to relay that experience. And something that we ask ourselves as we go through the editing process is 
does this feel true to what we saw? Does this feel true to our experience that day in that room or over the course of three years? And when you talk about, you know, building, you know, building a story, let's say we really, I think we both stand behind the fact that this, this to us feels like a, a portrayal of our, of what we experienced mm -hmm. and a number of those conversations um, and interact. Yeah, but what you experienced could also, I mean, if you have an agenda, if you don't like someone, it's like an author, right? If I'm writing an autobiography, I can make anyone look bad. I'm playing God. So if you really don't like someone, you can definitely, I mean, it's still your truth, but you can definitely twist your what you are seeing. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to show what is, not what you want to portray or how you feel that happened they were repeated many times over the three years you know yeah. conflicts with the community like all of these things that, that you saw um happen yeah yeah it's it's weird something i often think about because i've had plenty of you know guests on where we talk about like misinformation and stuff like that but there are certain points where i feel like we don't give the audience enough credit right like like you were talking about the beginning of episode four where there's like a montage to like build a feeling okay. i'm like no rational person would think that this is all like one day and just multiple outfit changes. It's like, no, I understand this is edited. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, so there's certain points where I'm hearing Teal uh, talk. I'm like, I don't think anybody saw it that way aside from you. But you know, with just a little bit more of your time, um, going back to that that day, like that, the the, I don't I don't even know how to describe it because it's not an intervention, right? <laughs> Uh, but I'm always wondering, like, what the hell was going through all of your heads? So people who haven't watched yet, please go watch this series. But I'm sitting there, and I remember the old days of addiction treatment, right? They used to shame the person. They would get the person there, like, hey, you piece of garbage, you're ruining your family, you're destroying, you know, and they would just, like, shame them. And then they're like, oh, well, research shows that doesn't work too well. But this was like that, turned up to 12, and different, they bring her in and mm -hmm. everybody goes around. It was like gaslighting, right? They're putting words in his mouth, like, like saying like, you hate Teal, you think she's in control. And Teal's saying this too, she's saying what you feel about me. So as the creators, as the people sitting in that room, what was going on in your minds? Were you like, like, was that, I don't know. Was that the weirdest thing you've been a part of? I know you've both done quite a few documentaries. <laughs> like, I was sitting there, I'm like, what's what's going on in these people's heads? Yeah, it, it was painful. It was really painful to watch that. And I think what's so disheartening about it, you know, you experience it once in the show, but we experienced it many times in the film. Oh, we wow. filmed that was like a times. normal practice. Yeah, it's a normal practice. We saw that happen many, many times. We also experienced that ourselves. And so when we were filming that, I didn't totally understand what that felt like. Later on, it was, uh, I want to say like six, seven months later, I got my own experience of that. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that they brought you in and they circled around you and wait a second? No. Okay. Dive into that just a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, this was one, this was one of those instances where, oh, I don't remember what we were talking about, something about filming and they were upset with me about something. Um, and I remember, uh, me and Bits were heading over there and Bits wasn't feeling good that day. She was feeling sick. So she stayed back and I went over there, I think eight or 9 PM. Um, and it turned into that where, you know, it was the whole community and everyone was in a circle around me. And um, it started out as a logical conversation where, you know, Teal had an issue and she brought it up uh, a lot of the logic. And then very quickly it turned into this thing where everyone else has felt like they were sort of parroting what she was saying. Yeah. Um, and it went on till about 2 a.m. Um, and I quickly realized like there's, this isn't a, this isn't a conversation. And I did, I, I fell into a similar role that you see in, in hers yeah. where you just kind of get quiet and there's no, like, if you if you disagree, you're wrong. If you agree, there's no there's no way yeah. to move. Um, I could not. I cannot. And um, I can't imagine. Right? Like, I uh, you know if you if you like up your thing. Yeah, I gotta be honest. <clears throat> there was there was that scene that I saw, and um, it it didn't feel good. It didn't feel right. Maybe that is something that Till does. I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit more to it than just getting in a circle and just belittling somebody. I think it's a type of process maybe that she does to with her community. Um, but I personally don't like it either. And if I was in that situation, I would hate it too. So that's fair. Therapy by 10 after this whole thing was filmed, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I'm looking at that. I'm like, I would lose it. And 
like I feel like I would just have to like walk out and say sorry and just bolt. Like, what do you do, right? But um, yeah, like uh, well, I mean, what was we what had, were your thoughts? We had a license. I mean, we had a licensed okay. psychotherapist attached to up to the to the project. Really? Yeah, at the advent, just for this, and and really having worked, I think we've both worked on content that is, you know, deeply psychologically, you know, engaging, and also you, in a, in situations where you feel like you might need an outlet or a perspective. And we engaged like a licensed psychotherapist for that reason uh -huh. um, to to be someone we could have a conversation with, you know, through that time. Um, as individuals or together as a team or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I I actually don't think I was, it's hard to say because again, it did happen a number of times. I don't think I was in the, in the room for the time that the one that is in the show uh, when that was filmed. But I think part of the challenge is like, again, even, even in that situation, we're not there to like intervene and give opinions on anything that's happening. We're really there to just, yeah. experience be sponges for what we're seeing and i think that it, it is painful i think it's a it's a painful thing to go through because we really don't see it as our place it's certainly not in that mo in that scenario to um to have any opinion at all and you process it later often yeah yeah, and you know, coming to the end here, I, 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 it makes me want to get you both back on here because I'm hearing these little these little <laughs> tidbits. I'm like, wait a second, but uh, no, that's really cool that you had a, a a licensed person there too, and you know, you can say like, hey, is this is this normal? You know, or what what is this? They uh, weren't to clarify. They weren't in the. They weren't filming. Sorry, I have a siren. They weren't filming with us. They were just available. They were available. They were available, available yeah, to yeah. the team, and honestly, it was the most grounding thing. Like I think Good. it was crucial for our mental health, and we also the the edit team too. Too. you know these editors are going through hundreds of hours of footage and all of the kind of pain sweat and tears and and you know uh yeah. side effects of it are going on to them as well so they had access to this psychotherapist as well and, and worked with them. yeah like because you know uh i was telling my girlfriend like you know uh, as much as i love the series like teal's responses were just as entertaining because it was just so strange and like i think that scene that we're talking about that's one where it's like there's no editing tricks like you could bring in like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and nothing would have changed <laughs> that scene. Like that's what was happening. And the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Looking at that, it's like, this is not, this doesn't seem right. And people kind of look at it like it is, you know what I mean? So that's what really makes me interested about like just how groups form and this kind of like cult-like thing that can happen, but you know, also, uh, not to not to interrupt you, Chris, but I'll also say you know that that seeing seeing the group think and seeing uh, followers kind of agree with what she's saying is what you're seeing publicly. But I also yeah, want to yeah. say that there are a lot of conversations happening, and a lot of people who've reached out to us, who you know were a part of this group or have been following Teal, or who are survivors who have gotten out and who are talking about it, and who are saying like, you know this has changed my perspective. And I'm thinking about agency and healing in a totally different way. And thank you for showing me what was going on because this impacts me. So I think, you know, on the chat forums, you see one thing, I think in reality, there's a much more holistic conversation taking place. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely good. Part of our interest, by the way, in, in general, like this, we always say like, we have these conversations and uh, everyone being able to consider how they're behaving in their own lives and like, where they see healing and helping like this is really something that we were interested in in starting a conversation about and this series is not intended to answer those questions yeah yeah you know uh i forgot which book i was reading but you know when talking about like why people watch these types of docuseries or even like true crime and some people mm -hmm. get comfort because it, it, it teaches us how to avoid these situations so even even with her diehard fans coming after you. I, I, the whole time I was watching it, I'm like, I really hope people are seeing this and saying like, whoa, like, you know, because sometimes that is like this kind of silent majority because a lot of people are afraid to speak out because you leave a comment on there, you'll get <laughs> just thrashed. But uh, last question for you both, because I can't let you leave without asking. I felt, I felt that it ended very abruptly. I was like, there's no way that was only four episodes. There's no way, right? Like it did have some like kind of closure, right? Like a little bit, it kind of, like there was a storyline that ended, but I'm like, I need more. So maybe it was just my, my needing of more, but did four episodes 
feel short for you if you had your wish? Would you get like a 10 episode contract? Because you clearly have way more footage, right? Like, why only four episodes? What would you have done if you had more? I think for us, you know, we we felt like four is what this story deserved. You know, going back to the constraints we set out at the beginning, where it's like we're trying to add something new to the conversation. We're trying to show what's unfolding over this period of time. Um, we're trying to raise the questions because we don't necessarily feel like we're the people to be answering them. We're really raising the questions. And when the series ends is when we feel like the conversation should begin. And if people want to dig mm-hmm. into Neil's backstory, if they want to dig into the repressed memories, if they want to dig into the suicide, there's a lot of content out there that explores that you know, oh, really yeah. well. So I think it's a, it's a kicking off point, if anything. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, you, you, you don't need a fifth. Teal made it with her reaction video. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's about an hour of itself. But no, that, that makes sense, too. Uh, because there is a lot else out there and it is a great way to like get people to do additional research and and look into it so last last question just for you both uh we'll start with you bits what what are you working on next you you mentioned one other part don't care um okay (laughs) what do you guys think after watching this um did they convince you a little bit more uh are you still pro teal anti teal i mean i also don't like the pro anti thing um you know huh for me i think you know i don't think teal's perfect i don't think that she has all the answers for everything and i don't think her methods all of them are are perfect but in the end of the day, I think she's helping a lot of people and her message is very powerful. Um, and, you know, um, I'm getting a call. Go away. And definitely, you know, uh, there are some things in the deep end that I have to agree with these guys that didn't look edited the way that she described. And she actually didn't... Um, contest a lot of those things like the group stuff but then again i have to go back you know in fact you know what i think we should watch all of her you know um comebacks to all of the the episodes to really see the difference um yeah i don't know how to end this i'm kind of left like a little bit by the way this is way too long and i also just didn't feel like they gave me really enough answers um yeah I'm just confused. (laughs) I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if there are any other videos that you would like me to watch of any other spiritual healers, spiritual leaders, uh, any YouTube video that you think that you would like me to watch with you and comment, please leave a comment below because I read all of them. Um, Yeah. All right. That's it. I'm done. I don't know what else to say. Okay. Bye.